to the next video in today's video i will show you how to do background operation using work manager uh, periodically in react native android i have already done a video on ios so if you are curious you can watch that video i have also done a video on for react native android uh, for one time request but this is periodic request so how it is different from one time request is that so once the user has installed your app for the very first time you can ask the os to perform some background operation when will the background operation perform will be completely determined by your os you can't really control it but the advantage of periodic work request is that once the user closes the app and if suppose he doesn't open your app for uh, the next 10 days uh, the periodic uh, work request will uh, like it's like the name suggests it will happen periodically depending on the os uh, when the os feels like so that's the advantage as compared to one time uh, request so let's get started uh, the uh, thing is that uh, this code will remain almost the same irrespective of whether you are using the new architecture or the old architecture of react native but the disadvantage is that almost 99 percent of the code we have to write it on the native side uh, because it's very difficult to process some javascript code uh, when you are in uh, when your app is completely closed and you have to perform a background operation so what i'm trying to do is that i'm trying to call, do an api call to a free api service once we once i get some data i am storing it inside preferences data store so preferences data store is a key value or data store like a sync storage and once the open user once the user opens the app after you know few days or few hours like for now i have just kept it as one hour so but it is not guaranteed that the periodic work request will execute after one hour itself so once you run the app you can close the app and you might check it after five to six hours hopefully that uh, might uh, give the os some time to execute your background operation again it can happen it might not happen but if it has happened then uh, what i'm doing once the user reopens the app i'm fetching data from my preferences data store and showing it on the screen so that's what we will be doing so first create a react native project and here you can see that i have created a variable called you using use state and i'm listening for this result which i will get it from native android side once the user has opened the app provided there is data inside our preferences data store if there is data i am uh, changing this variable and displaying it inside a, a text of view uh, so now you will have to open the android folder inside android studio firstly you will have to go to build.gradle.kts i have updated the kotlin version to 1.8.20 also i have added this class path for dagger hilt so dagger hilt is a dependency injection uh, you don't want to create uh, objects directly uh, using constructors so dagger hilt provides a better way next go to this build.gradle.kts you have to apply this two bits of code again uh, this is for dagger hilt and this is for kotlin capped so at the time of this recording ksp is still not stable yet but if you are watching this video uh, in the future and if ksp is stable then better to use ksp instead of kotlin capped <coughs> next uh, you will have to add this uh, for hilt again dagger hilt for dependency injection this is used for work manager for processing background operations uh, retrofit is used for making http calls that's what i'm doing data store is used for storing preferences data like key value data pair inside preferences data store and lifecycle i have used because i require access to lifecycle scope and coroutines next you will have to go over here to rn go to android manifest.xml add internet permission because we are calling an api uh, also make sure you have this main application over here inside android colon name and over here you will have to add this provider tag as well uh, because uh, this helps us to uh, do work manager initialization uh, so yeah you just add this bit of code as well next create this uh, interface called demo api so uh, suppose you have an api endpoint so apart from your base url everything else you can put it over here so this is a get request and in the response we get this post and if you see this is our post and uh, once i get this post i'm just show uh, uh, like saving the title inside preferences data store like these all things are irrelevant but just because the response gives all this back i'm using it next you have to create this network module 
so this is a singleton so this is the base url for my api and this is uh, another these are all singleton so this is for ok http client which is required by retrofit this is for json conversion so we are using json uh, this is for providing retrofit instance so th we require that and here we uh, require this uh, api service as well so we are passing our demo api file and this is another singleton for cre creating preferences data store once that is done we will create is this data store repository as well so this is used to store normal key value data pair i have all so here we in this we will be storing those data from our api and this is for getting that api uh, data from api and here you can see i'm also storing the count on how many times our background operation is performed and i'm also displaying this inside our text view so just so that it would be helpful for you in understanding how many times the background operation has performed next uh, going to main application so firstly you will have to mark it as at the rate, at the rate hilt android app next here you have to add this hilt worker factory entry point which references to this custom worker factory which i have created also you will have to implement this configuration dot provider uh, which will ask you to override this method and we pass this worker factory so this hilt worker point needs to be passed again this is boilerplate code even i don't understand it but here we are creating our custom worker factory and here uh, we are creating uh, the object for our custom worker which we have defined it over here okay now if you go to custom worker here you can see that we are marking it as at the rate hilt worker we are injecting our demo api context worker parameter and data source repository and this is the main thing uh, like this do work method gets called in the background so here you can do whatever you feel like so all i am doing is i am calling our api if the api is successful then i am logging it to the console but i think this would be pretty useless because we really don't know when it would be get performed but i am saving that data inside our data store repository i am also getting the count and if the count is zero i am updating the count by one if it is one i am updating it by two so i am getting the count and i am updating the count as well and i am sending a success message else i am uh, doing a failure message okay next what i am doing is i have shown you this 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 and this is now coming back to main activity firstly you will have to mark it as at the rate and android entry point it is part of dagger hilt next we are injecting our data source repository if you have a view model you can inject it via that as well but just to keep it simple i'm directly in injecting it inside my main activity and here uh, you can see that i am passing this periodic work request builder uh, and uh, i am setting some time uh, so when i want to run it i want to run it for every hour but here i am setting the flex time interval as 15 because uh, it, it means that work will be executed between 45 minutes to one hour okay now you might be thinking instead of hours i'll keep it as seconds that won't work uh, again the work will be decided by your os even though we are specifying it in one hour uh, the os will try to execute within one hour but there is no guarantee for it also if you want you can set some constraints as well like uh, when there is proper network uh, when there is uh, i'll show you how to set constraints so i'll just open my android app this one let me just check um, so yeah you can set constraints like this as well so suppose you want to run this uh, periodic request only when there is network connectivity you can use this and you can on comment this also if you want you can set other network other type of constraints as well like it requires charging battery not low it's a good practice to set some uh, some constraints but for simplicity i have not and here we are getting our work manager and we are making sure uh, this the work which we are doing is a unique work request that's why i'm given it some name you can give any name which you want and once the app is opened we are also calling this retrieve data so if there is data store inside our preferences data store here you can see i'm getting that string data and here i'm getting our count data as well and i'm sending it back to react native side so yeah that's it uh, thank you for watching bye